Good morning, Mayor Well. It certainly is a pleasure to have you down here at Exchange Place in our new building. We uh, are delighted to be part of this production, especially since uh, the bank has put a lot of faith in this particular area with our new uh, administration building. And uh, I think that uh, we wouldn't have done this if we didn't feel that Jersey City had a good growth potential and that the political climate was satisfactory for business purposes. Well, oh, good, Tom. We're happy to be here, too, and to have this opportunity to join with you in presenting the problems that both you and I face in moving the city forward, because... Mr. Thomas Stanton, president of the First Jersey National Bank, and Mayor Thomas Whalen of Jersey City. It's good for Jersey City. The problems we face in, in our town are the same problems that all the old industrial cities are facing. The cities are suffering from problems which took maybe a hundred years to develop and we're not going to solve these problems overnight. The field of urban renewal, we are moving ahead in Jersey City, I think, at, a, at a, a good pace. It's not a pace that we're pleased with, but it's, it's the best we can do under the circumstances. And I want you to know that certainly the, the work that you've done here in Exchange Place area and the contribution that you have made and through your instrumentality, the business community has made to our city is part of the, the impetus that is moving this thing forward. And I want you to know that. Well, we have such an unparalleled location here. As you know, uh, a lot of our own literature is uh, designed to show our location via V New York. This Jersey City waterfront has, in effect, no place to go but up. We feel there's a lot of stability here in Hudson County that is not available elsewhere in the state, plus good supply of labor. And I think many of the projects that are going to be shown later in this film are going to detail that in a very excellent way. Jersey City, over 300 years old and the second largest city in the state, has always been considered an industrial center. Blue chip companies such as Colgate have found this to be an ideal location. Many of the local companies, such as Ryerson Steel, are expanding to increase their productivity. Public service has the largest generating station in the state. Longtime residents in the community are Westinghouse Elevator Division, Lehman Paint, and Inland Steel Container. Muller's has enjoyed over 100 years of production and is also expanding their operation. Besides using long established printing equipment, Scott Printing is keeping up with technological advancements by having the first ultra-modern press of its kind in the United States. Joseph Dixon Crucible Company is another 100-year resident, which manufactures products for homes, schools, and industry. Metro Glass, a division of National Dairy Products, is another top-notch industrial resident. industry and promoting the city as a location for new commerce is the Area Development Council, formerly guided by Mr. New Jersey, Clayton Cronkite. ADC is now under the chairmanship of John Fennelly. Together with the Chamber of Commerce, they provide a one-stop information center. Shoppers in Jersey City enjoy both an urban and suburban atmosphere. Winner 
of the new Good Neighbor Award, the First Jersey National Bank is providing a new image and leadership for growth in the city. In what had been the worst slum area of the city, the Valley Company is also helping to promote the new image of the area and is another Good Neighbor Award winner. Large junkyards were transformed into a modern job-producing industrial area. At Liberty Park, Wasteland was transformed into a new industrial park. The largest building to be constructed in the last 18 years will be that of the W.T. Grant Company. Liberty Park is also the home of many quality firms. construction and expansions are taking place throughout the city. Shearson Hamill is keeping pace with the rebirth of the area. Educational facilities have moved ahead. St. Peter's College and Jersey City State College have large expansion programs underway. Public and parochial facilities are also rebuilding. Recreation is very important to the community. Only minutes from the heart of New York City, air-conditioned trains speed thousands of passengers throughout the area. A new $45 million Port Authority Transportation Center will be erected in the heart of Journal Square. In the center of this view will be the new municipal complex, which will contain the city's police, fire, and court headquarters. Adding to the rebirth of the community will be the new 15-story office building being constructed by the Ukrainian National Association adjacent to the First Jersey National Bank. Over 410 acres of industrial land are being created at the Port Jersey Industrial Center. More than two-thirds of the entire center will be used for deep water shipping. The prospective availability of 300 acres at Caven Point should provide additional development opportunities. The site of Operation Breakthrough is adjacent to the St. John's Apartments and is a federal plan using new construction techniques for building modern apartments. Another federal program, the $76 million postal complex, will locate here. 
Hospitals are also keeping pace with construction activities in the city. At Christ Hospital, modernization is being carried on to increase services to the community. Many older, well-maintained houses can be seen throughout the city. While much of the city has retained its character, a portion of it is undergoing extensive urban renewal. Henderson Street Urban Renewal Project will replace blight with new one and two family homes. Our appetite is well satisfied in the many fine restaurants throughout the city. Signs of a rebuilding city are all around us. Included with luxurious living are all the shopping and recreation advantages which make for a healthy, more enjoyable life. A city is not rebuilt in a day, but involves all of us in years of planning and hard work.